Okay, so let's continue working on our super risk control. In this video, I want to get the two control objects blended between each other and the output of that driving our palm bone, driving the orientation of our wrist. I also want to deal with setting up a nice control object within our super risk control that allows us to quickly select the wrist control as a whole and get access to those handles for the wrist control. This is actually going to conclude our super risk control for everything except for the matching our attached control to the detached control and vice versa. So it's going to conclude all of the functionality except for those matching scripts. So with that, let's allow editing of contents on our super risk control, jump down inside, and the first thing I want to do is get these guys blended together. So I'm going to right click on the output of our risk control arm parent and wire this into a blend object. And then I'm going to take our risk control master control parent and wire that into the input of the blend that's going to now be our second input. That means as we wait between weight one and weight two, we'll blend between our arm parent, our attached control, and the master control parent, our detached control. So I'm going to rename this to blend wrist controls. Let's turn off selectability and visibility of that object. Let's make sure we did write that correctly. Fantastic. Jump up and grab the type properties of our asset. I do want to promote or create a new float that we can use to drive our uh, blend weighting. So I'm going to create a new float underneath our colors and our handles, etc. And I'm going to name this to our blend, which I'm going to give a label of attach, detach, blend. I'm abbreviating attach and detach so this does indeed fit within the label space that we have on an asset because this is going to be one of our promoted parameters later on. And I do want to lock this between a range of 0 and 1. Again, we're going to be blending between uh, objects. So 0 means it's going to be fully attached. 1 means it's going to be fully detached. So if we accept this, we can now jump inside our asset and we can link up the weights of our blend to that newly created parameter. So when it's set to a value of zero, I want 100% towards our arm parent. That means I want weight one to be one and weight two to be zero. When blend is set to one, I want the, uh, the uh, opposite of that. So I want weight one to be zero and weight two to be one. That means if I was to take one minus blend, when blend's equal to zero, we get a value of one here. When blend was equal to one, we get a value of zero here. That would work for weight one. If I was to take blend as opposed to one minus blend for weight two, we then get a value of zero when we're blended over to the attached and a value of one when we're blended to the detached. So I'm going to take one minus that blend parameter for our weight one, and I'm going to take the blend parameter for weight two. Fantastic. We can see the sliders in the view have actually updated to represent that, which is fantastic because if I bring up the parameters for our super risk control and jump back down inside, take a look at the sliders. As we start blending between those inputs, we can see the sliders blending back and forth. So as we go from attached to detached, weight two starts getting more and more and more influence. That's our detached control. Weight one starts getting less and less and less influence. So that is indeed working fantastically. So we can now take the result of this and we can use it to drive our wrist. Before I do, it would make sense to only have our control objects visible in the view when they are indeed active. That means if we're blended all the way to only our attached control, then I want to make sure that only our attached control is visible. Likewise, if we're blended all the way to only having our detached control, I want to make sure that only our detached control is visible. So if we grab our arm parent risk control and allow the changing of its display parameter, what we can do, we can basically compare the blend parameter on our asset to a value. We know that we are attached all the time that we have a blend value that is less than one. That means only when we hit a blend value of one are we fully detached. So if I was to take a look at that blend parameter and say if blend is less than one, then we are going to return a true value here. That means we are displayed as soon as we hit one, we return a false value here and we're no longer displayed. In the same way, if I do a display parameter on the master control parent risk control and say, Take a look at that blend parameter as long as it is greater than zero. And you can see because we're fully attached, it's already disappeared. 
as long as it's greater than zero don't show that particular control so we can grab this guy I'm going to grab select let's press escape grab the view tool just so we don't see handles in our way we can see there is our attached control as we blend over now our detached control has come in and now our attached control has disappeared so there we go blending the visibility between those two guys so I'm going to jump back inside our asset I'm going to wire our blend risk controls into a null that we can reference just so that we can grab the orientation the blended orientation between those two control objects so I'm going to right click wire into a null and I'm going to rename this null to two wrist output do you want to turn off the visibility and selectability? I'm not going to do anything with this now. It's simply a reference point for me to be able to grab the orientations that are coming out of our blend wrist controls, along with as well the actual position of the wrist control. So now outside our wrist control asset, I can create a new fetch object. Again, following our color convention, I'll give that a purple node color. I'm going to give this the name of fetch, in actual fact, L underscore fetch. Let's try that again. L underscore fetch underscore wrist underscore output. And I still didn't manage to type it correctly. There you go. L underscore fetch underscore wrist underscore output. Fantastic. I do want to make sure that we use the parent transform of the fetched object. I'm not worried about whether we use the parent transform of this object or not because of the fact that I know that our character asset is going to be set up in such a way that we cannot actually position the character asset itself. So we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and reference that particular parameter. So I'm going to go and jump down and find inside the super wrist control that two wrist output and accept that. And you can see we now have grabbed the two wrist output. Now I'm going to go ahead and parent our palm bone to that control, keeping its position. Before I do that, I want to ensure that I'm blended all the way over to the attached control. That's because I know that currently the palms orientation matches the attached control orientation. That means I want to make sure that when we keep position, we're keeping our position relative to the attached control. Our attached control orientation is completely different to our attached. We can see our blend object there rotating around, or in actual fact, that's our fetch object grabbing the result rotating around and we obviously don't want to have it such that our attach object orientation doesn't match the palm because that wouldn't make much sense it makes sense to grab the attach object and see hey we have this particular orientation and that matches our bone and then when we blend over to the attach control that orientation will also match the orientation of our bone so we want to make sure we are blended fully over to attach before we parent indeed we are so I'm going to parent L underscore palm root while keeping position to that fetch object so you can see our root has kept position so now I can go ahead and make sure that we turn off selectability and visibility of that object so now if we were to grab our attached control and rotate that you see that we are indeed rotating and we exist in the orientation of that palm bone you can see that our axes align up very nicely with that palm bone and then from there if we were to blend over to the detached control you can see that we do blend over to the detached control when we grab it you can see that again our axes are lining up nicely with that palm bone it's just that we were offset to the side we need to rotate around here to have our arm in the correct orientation so I'm going to make sure that these guys are zeroed back out I'm going to blend back over to the attached control and that's going to almost conclude this video I do want to set up that nice ability for us to be able to quickly select our asset as opposed to the control so I'm going to jump inside and I'm going to create a new null branched off of our blend wrist controls and this null is going to serve simply as a control object that when we select it's actually going to select the asset and not itself so I'm going to name this the super wrist selector and if we make sure, well first because it's a control object, let's set it up with its wireframe color and node color. And let's go ahead and if we make sure that this guy is not selectable, but is indeed visible, what that means is if we select him, it's going to select our asset, whereas selectable visible controls, if we select them, selects the control itself. If we select 
a non-selectable visible control, we select the asset. We know if we select the asset and have our handles visible, we're going to be able to control the various components of our hand. So we can jump inside, and I want to set up as super wrist selector. So I'm going to translate up in Y very slightly so that we sit outside the top of our control. So maybe even further than that. Somewhere right around there. I'm going to give this the control type of null and circles. And I'm going to just, just tweak the geo scale down even higher than that. Just very slightly, so it's slightly smaller than it was before. So now if I was to jump up and save our asset, match the current definition, we can see that we can come in and we can grab any of the components of our hand. So we can come in and grab our control for the attached rotations. You'll see that we still see the parameters here changing on our asset for the attached wrist control. Or we could come in and we could grab our IK handle and move our IK handle. To demonstrate this, let's go ahead and actually blend over to IK on the arm. Fantastic. So we could grab our IK handle and move our IK handle around. But you can see grabbing our IK handle, trying to position our wrist, then orient our wrist, then position our wrist, then orient our wrist. It's a little bit non-intuitive. We can then come in and grab the overall super wrist control itself with that new control object we created. Turn off the detached handle. We can now both position and orient our hand at the same time without having to select between the two. So that was the whole purpose of this super wrist control. Not forgetting, of course, we have the ability to blend over to the detached control. And when we do that, we're currently obviously going to be causing an offset. They're not lined up. In the next video, we're going to deal with matching between those two so that we can say, OK, match the detached control to whatever the current orientation of the attached control is. Then if we blend back and forth, they are going to line up in the exact same space and vice versa. We can match the attached control to whatever the current orientation of the detached control is. So before we finish, I want to zero everything back out. Make sure that's all zeroed out, blend back over to the attached and make sure that we blend back over to FK on our arm. And with that, that is going to conclude this video. Thanks a lot, everyone.